Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNoFoto.com and in today's little short video I'm going to be doing an introduction to using Photomatics Pro 5.0 I think it is um, the HDR rendering software from HDR Soft. So HDR, um, it's a way of combining um, a number of images taken at different exposures into a single photograph or a single image to bring out the detail and the texture in lots of different things. So um, You've probably seen one of the videos I've just done before where I took a single image and used Photomatics to um, enhance it. But if you really want to get into the shadows and the highlights, you're better off taking at least um, three images. Um, and so this is probably uh, quite a good example here. We've got you know, a fairly plain photograph. Um, it's an interesting building, but it was taken on quite a grey day. So I put my camera into... Um, exposure bracketing mode and if you have a look through my uh, video stream on YouTube you'll find a guide how to do that on the Canon 600D and the Canon 350D and took three photos one after the other uh, one a normal exposure one um, very underexposed one overexposed so let's import these into uh, photomatics and kind of see what we can come up with and how you can quickly move through the program because it can be quite intimidating at first in order to um, come up with something that might be quite fun. So here's Photomatic Pro 5.0. Um, so what we want to do is we want to click on load bracketed photos. Let's browse for them and uh, they should be just in here. Now these are JPEGs. Um, I'm, I am, I'll admit it, I shoot JPEG. Uh, <laughs> mainly for speed for file size and I think with modern DSLRs well modern cameras in general JPEGs, JPEGs, JPEGs are pretty damn clean aren't they I mean you may well want to shoot with raw you may want that extra elbow room of being able to pull out that extra detail in the shadows and the highlights but you're going to end up transferring them to JPEGs that display them on the web or print them out anyway and you tend to find raw files can be very flat until you apply the enhancement. So here's my little tip for you. If you're a little bit disappointed with the photos that are coming out of your camera and you shoot raw, flick it over to high quality JPEGs. Go into the, the uh, picture scene settings and, and don't go for the plain setting. Go for one that's got a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more saturation. And see what comes out. It can be very pleasing indeed. But anyway, you could import raw files or JPEGs, um, probably even TIFFs and things like that into HDR. Uh, Photomatics, I'm not sure, but I'm working with JPEGs here. So I've got the three images. They were taken handheld, didn't use a tripod, um, took them one after the other. Um, so let's open them and see what the options come up with. So they've all come up there, so now we just say OK. And now we've got all these options. So align source images and crop them, right? I want to do that because, again, they were handheld and I've clicked that. Um, and also include pers perspective correction. I've said yes and I've put it in the middle. Show options to remove ghosting. Now, ghosting happens when there's a change from one photo to the other. So it could be somebody walking through the image. It could be a person moving. It could be the camera moving. It could be a tree branch or some grass moving in the wind in between the images. So what you want to do is, you know, you, you, you do want to uh, play around with this if you've got people in the image or things that might have moved and then it will come up and it will show you the ghost and you can move a slider to change it. Now in this particular picture, there shouldn't be any ghosts, but we're going to go in and have a look anyway. Uh, reduce noise, yes, definitely. <laughs> so because we redu and reduce camera co chromatic aberration. That tends to be when you have dark things against a bright background. So imagine like a a tree branch uh, with no leaves on it uh, against a bright sky. So that where you have this strong contrast between the black and the sky, often you get like this purple fringing. But that'll help to get rid of that because the HDR process brings that out. So let's align and show de-ghosting. Now these photos actually they're not at full resolution. In order to make Photomatics um, zoom along, um, I've sh I've made them a little bit smaller. Now. I could say, so what we've got here is selective or automatic de-ghosting. 
um, and then we could choose it manually and then what you do is you then just slide this slider and that will change anything that moves now there is an actually there is something in this photo that does have that is ghosted and it's in the middle here there's a rope that goes along there that we must have been moving in the in the wind so if I flick between the photos we can probably there we go it was moving so there is some ghosting in this photo so what we want to do is we want to let's have a look let's go back to no nothing let's see well there's something going on up here let's go to halfway I'm not sure about let's go very high no I don't like that there we go I tell us stick with that okay so I'm happy with that so I say okay and now it's going to tone map the image and come up with something hopefully that we can start to uh, start to play around with right bang here we go let's um, here's the histogram up here I'm not really bothered about that let's get rid of that let's make this pitch this uh, bit here a little bit bigger so you can actually see what's going on let's put fit there make it a little bit bigger there we go let's go back to the default so what you can see in the middle is the photograph that has been worked on by photomatics the three images have been pulled together and detail has been pulled out in fact if we turn the preview off you can see that was uh, the first photo but well that's the overexposed one and this is what we've got we can see detail in the sky and right down in fact if we put the loop over the little bit we can actually look at this detail in the window you can even see the little fan there and whereas if we go into the sky you know we can see all this cloud bit bit noisy but what the hey who cares um, let's have a look in that window so that kind of gives you an idea now this is a very natural looking photo now for me when you start using photomatics um, it can be a bit intimidating because over on the left here we've got all these sliders that we can move we can have a detail enhancer a contrast optimizer a tone compressor you think oh where do I start what do I do and you start playing around with the sliders and you kind of don't always know where you're getting and you're like whoa what's going on and um, things start sort of getting a bit odd maybe and you're like oh I don't know what I'm doing you get things like this but help is at hand over in the right hand side of the screen this is where we have our presets and all we really want to do is just work through these presets find something that we'd like and then we could fine tune it a little bit if we want over here on the left hand side but do remember when you're using something like Photomatix Pro we're creating an image that is really just starting point which we will then import or we'll save it out as a TIFF and then we'll edit it further in something like Photoshop or Photoshop Elements or Lightroom or Picasso or the GIMP you know we're not going to try and have a completely finished subject of uh, completely finished photo in Photomatics now that you might that might be the case you might be able to do that but don't worry if you can't get you, you just need to get close so let's so this is the default fairly natural looking let's go down to the next so that's balanced yeah a bit boring photographic yeah it's all right but the sky's disappeared natural yeah it is natural but let's again let's go back to what it was to start off with yeah, it's not that much better is it so if, you know and you're just trying right painterly oh that's interesting isn't it quite like that let's go back to the original you know, fairly boring oh yes lots of detail and I tend to look at these things and I'm think I'm thinking what would it look like when I convert it to uh, what would it look like when I convert it to black and white oh paint oh there we go now you probably look at this and think oh that looks a bit HDR ish doesn't it you've got that really common kind of red that's coming out of the bricks and the sky's gone darker you know what <laughs> normally in the normal world when you go out the sky is brighter than the ground isn't it that tends to be the way <laughs> it's only at night when the sky is dark and then you've got a street lights and everything in the ground however in black and white photographs it's not like that because you can use colored filters to turn the sky dark and then the ground does look brighter so I look at this and I think it may look a bit garish as a color photo but as a black and white let's just turn that color saturation that might be a good starting point so I would save that out as a TIFF and then um, and then uh, convert it to black and white in Picasso or Photoshop or something like that but let's come on let's carry on looking at some of these presets because they really are quite special painterly three yeah. all paint now oh, there we go come on look at that that is getting very dramatic isn't indeed I uh, sometimes I get a bit carried away with the HDRs 
Um, you won't really see it in the work I share on Flickr now, but if you go back a few years, you'll see I've got some very dramatic HDRs indeed. Painterly 5, no, not doing much for me. Vibrant, ah, the bottom bit is getting a bit flat. Enhanced, nice, yes, could be. Enhanced 2, no. Interior, no. Interior 2, no. Deep, mm, not sure. Woohoo, surreal. No, you see lots of HDRs. Well, you see lots of HDRs like that, but no, not for me. It's real two grunge. Mm, not today, thank you very much. Not grunge two. Creative, yeah, interesting. Creative two, no. Creative three, no. Soft, yeah, not my cup of tea. Soft two, soft three, no. Soft four, no. Smooth, no. Smooth two, no. Oh, monochrome. Ah, now that looks nice, doesn't it? That looks nice. That's a nice black and white. Could do with a little bit more contrast but again this is just a starting point monochrome 2 oh yes that's my cup of tea there we go so i think i'm thinking of this as a black and white image anyway i quite like that we've got a bit of ghost we've got a bit of um haloing going along here so this is where the um the edge you've got this this contrast between the bright sky and the dark roof and the algorithm has kind of put this this kind of uh halo of brightness so what we could do is we could turn down the strength a bit and that would the sky's gone lighter and so that's reduced the effect there so you can see how you could then fine-tune the image but of course really what I could do is if I went back to one of the other colored ones that I really liked at the beginning something like painterly and then maybe turn that down I could then, when I convert to black and white, I could then use a coloured filter to darken this out as well. So, I don't know. So what I could do is say, well actually, yeah, that's the one I want to go for. So let's apply the algorithms and it's going to apply it. Book. There's my photo. Um, I could, there's a finishing touch panel here so I can add a bit more contrast, add a bit of mild contrast. Oh, made it pop a little bit. And I want to save the final image. Now, we want to save it as a TIFF because TIFF, we don't lose any data. It's not like lossy JPEGs. And I could save it as an 8-bit or a 16-bit. Well, I started off with 8-bit JPEGs, so I'm saving them as 8-bit uh, TIFFs. So I'm going to save that one. But now, I, I tell you what, yeah, I've, I've changed my mind. I think I want to get the black and white version out. So that's easy. I just click on here, redo with other settings. Takes us back into here. Let's get rid of that nasty histogram. I'm not bothered about that. And now let's go down to the bottom where that black and white one was. Where was it? Monochrome. Was it that one? Monochrome one, two, three. Excuse me. I think it was monochrome. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I like that. Right. I want to do that one now. So it's going to enhance that one, but it needs more contrast. So I'm going to add a bit of contrast. I could, uh, I could back around with the colour, if it was a colour photograph, and I could sharpen it should I wish to. And then I would do, just save that off, and I could save that as a TIFF again. But let's change the file name to black and white. And now I've got my lossless TIFFs, which I can then work on on Photoshop, or uh, Lightroom, or Elements, or the Grimp, the Grimp, the Gimp, or even um, Picasso as well. So there we go, that's a kind of a, a lightning guide to Photomatix Pro 5 um, from HDR Soft. The key is to use those presets. Start with those presets and then just make sure you know you work your way through. Find one that's close and then have a little bit of a fiddle. But remember, that HDR image is just a starting point. Now, HDR, let's see how much. I mean, if you were to buy it for the in the UK, what is it, £60? But remember there is a free trial so go to hdrsoft.com download the free trial have a play around with it first get used to the fact that you know you're going to go out and um, take photos um, get, get used to your technique you know get to know your camera how you put it onto uh, exp uh, automatic exposure bracketing and um, taking three or more photographs in a row and then you'll find you can have some real fun with HDR. Less is more, but it's another real string to your bow. And for less than £100, you've got something that is very, very powerful and you'll probably come back to again and again. 
Okay, well that's it from me. I hope that this little guide, this little walkthrough video has been helpful. Um, my name's Rob from robnonphoto.com and remember you can email me scalespeeder at gmail.com and uh, thanks for watching.